Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Cup of Coffee with Diesel Experts. We're so glad you're here. Um, today's question is, how can we support young learners as creative writers through digital tools? And we have two wonderful guests to um, help us answer this question. Uh, before we start, I want to know more about you. So please let us know in the comments below on YouTube where you're from, uh, if you have any ideas about this topic, what you do in your classroom, uh, if you have any cool apps or websites that you recommend. And also, if you find this content helpful, please share on social media. You can use the hashtag Tizzle Coffee Chats. So uh, let's welcome Ernesto Lisboa. Hi, Ernesto. Hello. How are you, Diego? I'm doing great. Uh, I know you're in Venezuela and yes, you are I actually am. a recurrent speaker here because this is the second time you come to this uh, series. So how have you been? I've been doing well. Thank you. And I want to, uh, to say thank you because I, this is the second time that I'm a guest in this uh, Teasel Coffee Chats. So it's a real pleasure to be here. So what was the first video? How was the experience? It was fabulous. That was a video, um, how to use social media uh, for work. It was with um, Win Mason. And it was a great experience, actually. Yeah, we will definitely leave the, the link below um, in case you want to watch a video in you know, social media, whether we like it or not, you know, we've had to use it. And so uh, check, out, check out that video if you're interested. So let me tell you a little bit about Ernesto in case you don't know about him already. Ernesto, um, he holds a bachelor's degree in education with a major in modern languages from Universidad de Carabobo in Venezuela. And he has a master's in international management from the University of Strathclyde in Scotland. Uh, right now, Ernesto teaches English at a pedagogical university in Venezuela, Upel Maracay. He also teaches uh, in the English Access Microscholarship Program in Maracay. Uh, this is a program that is sponsored through the U.S. Department of State. And uh, he does not only teach English, he also teaches Spanish and French online, and he does some uh, freelance translations. So we're really happy to have you here. And you are a former uh, board member of Ventiso in Venezuela, Ventiso. Ventiso is uh, an affiliate of Tiso International Association. So welcome, Ernesto. Uh, like I said, we're happy Thank you're you. here. And please uh, do you. the honors and introduce our second guest. All right. So... Our second guest today is Dr. Dario Luis Varegas. Um, he's a lecturer in TESOL at the University of Strathclyde, UK. He's also an associate fellow with the University of Warwick. He's involved in teacher education initiatives in Argentina. He has recently co-edited two volumes for the International Perspectives in ELT series by Paul Griff Macmillan. His main teaching and research interests are action research, teacher education, authenticity in writing, CLIL, and he recently published his book, International Perspectives on CLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning. Well, let's uh, welcome Dr. Dario Varegas. Hi, Dario. Hello, Diego. Hello. Hi, Ernesto. Hi, everyone. How is it going, uh, Dario? I know you're an expert in CLIL. Uh, so yes, I'm excited well, about the book. just, you know, there, a cameo of the, uh, of the book. Uh, but yes, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm based in Glasgow and I work at the same university that uh, Ernesto graduated from uh, a few years ago. So Strathclyde is my professional home now. And I will say this is a coincidence, you know, like it just happened to be that Ernesto is a graduate from the same program. You know, we need to be, uh, you know, 100% transparent here. Um, so it just happy it was yes. a happy coincidence. <laughs> but Dario, I know that you're in Glasgow. What is your favorite thing about Glasgow? Oh, my favorite thing about Glasgow is uh, the parks. I and, and Ernesto, I'm sure you know this. Uh, you know the place I'm about to mention. I live right across uh, the Glasgow Green. So, oh my God, that's beautiful! Yes. So I go beautiful. for a run every day. So it's just a matter of me literally, literally crossing the road. Uh, starting to run around the park and by the Clyde, the, the river that cuts across uh, the city. So, yeah, but that's what I like, the parks that you've got here. And the people, the people are just wonderful, amazing, amazing people. Yeah. Very uh, great sense of humour, um, chatty, they are approachable, they, yes, lovely. 
Lovely people. Well, that's great, Dario. Um, so let's we, we're trying to keep this video short, so let's go down to business and talk about our question for today. Um, uh, but I want to introduce the topic. Um, you know, like online learning, you know, uh, we've all had to like do that right now, and sometimes it's not that easy, especially when it comes to young learners, because sometimes they don't have the skills to even use a computer the right way. They don't know where to click. They don't know what to do. So that can be an issue. Uh, also, they, sometimes they get distracted very easily. So I always talk about my nephew. He's 14 years old and he's in class, you know, like he is supposed to be in class, but he's also playing video games at the same time. And so, um, you know, he only opens his mic to say, I can hear you, teacher, you know, but it's, it's difficult. And it's also very difficult to teach writing and creative writing. You know, like writing is like sometimes we feel like, oh, they don't have the level. Our students, they cannot really write anything because they're just A1 or they're just starting. Uh, but writing is such an important thing to teach. And sometimes we don't know how to approach it. And there are like a lot of cool things like digital storytelling and a lot of apps and websites that we could use to make it more fun. And so this is our question today. How can we support young learners as creative writers through digital tools? And so that's why I invited these two experts to um, tell us more about this. And I'm going to start with um, this question. What is digital storytelling, Dario? And what should we care as teachers? Um, yes, I guess that we could um, say that digital storytelling is personal digital narratives. So you would be telling a story, um, and this is linked to creative writing. So we are asking students to write a story, short story, so um, there's that element of fiction or students could play around with elements of fiction, but then they could talk about their city, their neighborhood, their family, parents, their friends, um, childhood memories. If you're talking about teenagers or something they like, or they could be completely um, fictional and perhaps talk about outer space or traveling in time or, you know, whatever, um, you know, uh, children can think of because they're extremely creative and we've got to maximize that creativity. Um, so those personal digital narratives combine all that and um, they give students the chance to create with the language and to do something that's not multiple choice, fill in the gaps, that kind of thing. And uh, why should we care about it? Well, um, we are engaging learners in multimodal writing because, you know, they will be combining the written word with the sound, with image. So there will be a lot about that. And because you have that, then um, through digital storytelling, we may be encouraging or enhancing learner motivation, concentration, attention, collaboration, because they will be working on a story, on a project, and this could span over maybe a few classes, a few lessons, if you will. And in terms of like ELT or TESOL, in terms of learning English, um, students will be developing the four skills, you know, reading, writing, listening, speaking, because they will be working on this uh, process. and. Um, Alongside language skills, they will be also developing organizational skills because they need to plan the story. They need to know what they want to do. They need to know the story they want to tell and how they want to tell that story. And um, technical skills as well, because you know this will be done on a digital space, and therefore the three, you know, linguistic, organizational, and technical skills will be at play. I love that, Dario. And, you know, like I'm getting really interested in storytelling. I um, mean, you know, like you said, you can really do a lot. You, you're not just teaching English, but you're teaching so much more. And it makes it more fun for students. And I think we all like to tell stories. And sometimes, um, you know, it's easier to learn that way. You know, like if you present a difficult topic or content, you know, it's easier to just make a story about that. And that way people will understand it better rather than, you know, like explaining that in a more traditional way. So I love that. And, and thank you for being here again. But now I have a question for Ernesto. Uh, what do teachers need to take into consideration when I want to plan a lesson and 
insert or use some digital storytelling uh, with young learners. But I'm going to help you a little bit, Ernesto. Uh, I know you have great ideas, but um, I'm a social designer. And so like, I want to share uh, this model. Um, so I recently read this book. It's called Instructional Design for Teachers, and it was published by Alison Carl Chelman. And so we don't want to talk about social design in this episode, but the thing is that it's a big field. And so she brings it down to like what teachers need to do. And so she came up with these steps. So go ahead, Ernesto. One of the first things to consider is our learner, which are the goals, our learner's goals uh, in, in, in writing. So that's the starting point to know what the learner wants to learn. And as Leria said it before, creative writing through digital tools provides a great way to develop learners' motivation in the language because they're doing something different. So I just wanted to add two things, and I know that Dario has more thoughts on this. I just wanted to add two little things. One is, is that I couldn't agree more with you, Ernesto. We start with the goals, with what do we want our students to learn, how are we going to write these objectives, and also the assessment. Because it makes no sense if you're teaching storytelling and doing all of these wonderful things in class, but at the end of the year or the end of the term, then your exam comes down to just a multiple choice test. So there is no alignment between the goals, the objectives, and the test. Um, step number seven in this model is selecting media, meaning technology or whatever. So uh, this author says actually that it is a mistake to start with technology in mind. So sometimes we as teachers say, oh, I want to use this website or this app. And so you start there. It's like, no, 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 no. You need to start really thinking about your goals and everything else. And the technology comes a little bit later. Yes, I couldn't agree more with that because, for example, when we work with digital storytelling, we will start in the way that you would normally teach, you know, writing story. And you have that element of authenticity because, um, you know, you're not writing a story just for the teacher to read and make comments on, which is something that we don't do when we read a story. Um, we don't give it back to the writer with comments on it. Um, so then the story could be read by other students or by people outside the, the classroom, if you will. So other elements that we need to think about um, could be, well, the plot. So the, the elements of the story itself. So the plot, the setting, the characters, um, you know, time and space, the point of view, the theme. So those are the things that students need to think about. So this is why they require like planning skills and then script. So they will be working on script and a storyboard, and that is, and, and this is like the the, uh, the new element into the picture because as this will be um, a digital, visual, multimodal story, then they need to have a storyboard to work with. So they can do that, you know, on any um, app they have or something on the computer. It could be a Word document. It could be like just you know pen and paper, but then they will think about the app they want to use. But as you very well mentioned before, this will come later once they've got a story. And then depending on the story they have, they may want to choose one app or, you know, in particular. And can I just say something about assessment here? Yeah. Um, um, at least in, in my experience, um, this... Working on storytelling is the assessment itself. So you might say that this is a case of formative assessment because, you know, as the students will be working on different drafts and I give them feedback. So I keep a record or I gather information about how they're doing until they produce something they're happy with that you might say it is the product. So the assessment is built in the activity itself. So it serves the purposes of like learning and assessing so it is assessment for learning at the same time yeah that's a great point um you can assess in a formative way you know um so that's great the problem is that at the end of the day sometimes you know students they just need to complete or do like a standardized test you know a proficiency test but i think that if you are you know teaching storytelling and doing this that they will have you know better skills to to actually, you know, like know how to write for these other proficiency tests. Is that, do you agree with me or what do you think? Oh, yes, because that will help with, and actually there are studies 
this is like the boring side of me, there are studies that uh, show that even if you um, do something, let's say, more radical or creative or whatever it is, then that might have a positive impact on um, those kind of tests that are uh, standardized and proficiency tests because they have been developing the language anyways. Yeah. So something that you said was that, um, that we said earlier, is that choosing the app, the website, comes a little bit later in the process. And also th there are many questions that you may want to consider, like, you know, like, is this age appropriate? You know, it's not the same working with a five-year-old and working with a 15-year-old. You know, is it free? Do we have access to this? Um, do we have to pay? Can we pay? You know, there are so many questions that you need to really ask yourself before using an app or website. But I would like to finish this video with some examples, recommendations, maybe things that you've used before, like websites that you think are helpful. And also I want to invite our audience to, um, you know, share in the comments, like more ideas. So what are some of your favorite, that you on some of your favorite websites or apps to teach digital storytelling to young learners? Um, well, the first one I can think of is uh, Photobabble. This is what you've got to create an account, but you don't have to pay for it, but you do need to have an, an account. And that can help you to add voice to um, a visual element. So if you have an image or if you have um, graphics, then you can record your voice over that visual element. Then another very good one is that um, one called Thing Link, and that helps students create um, a multimedia poster. So again, you can share your account with them uh, or students can create their own accounts. And that's a really good um, app. Storybird is another one for creating collaborative storybooks. So again, you have the digital story element there. And what I like about it is that it allows students to work uh, collaboratively. And that's great because they are really the center of their own work, of their own story. Then others for, for example, other apps for animation, you can think of Go Animate and Scratch. And for um, more work on digital storytelling, uh, apps such as iMovie, you know, that comes with Apple. Um, the, the other one, Photo Story and Animato, all these help you create or help learners create stories. And some of them give you the option of like playing around with the digital story contained in a kind of traditional book. So you, digitally speaking, you know, you will open the book, but then all the images will start moving. My favorite uh, app would be actually I, I'm not sure if that's an app. It's Storybird. I, I've only used the the website. Mm. Uh, I don't know if there's an app, and my students have used the website as well. And uh, this provides uh, the space for students to insert pictures and to write short pieces of text. And it's very easy to use. I've used this one, and I've also used Canva which is meant for presentation. But mm -hmm. one of my students, he, he came up with this, using this. So I decided using Canva, which is very easy mm -hmm. to use on a tablet. Right. So I will say that I love technology. I'm all about technology. But I know that it's not always possible, feasible, realistic to use all of these things. But really, you know, you may not need anything to, to teach storytelling or digital storytelling. You could use, you know, paper. You could use WhatsApp, texting. You could use... Yeah. Because of where, you know, like, it's not necessarily about the app. Of course, you know, these are cool apps and they allow you to do lots of cool stuff. But if you don't have access to that, do not think that you cannot do this. You can still do it. Just think about how, you know, like maybe sometimes paper could be great, you know, or something or just less technological. Um, but um, but still works, right? So um, thank you so much again, Dario, Ernesto. We're about to close this video. Do you have any closing thoughts, remarks, ideas that you want to share with our audience? Um, no, just, you know, uh, building up what you just said that, yes, it could be digital or students can create their own comics. And you usually have in the classroom really, uh, well, anyone actually, they can draw wonderful things and make wonderful visuals. So you can do like, you know, comics or sometimes students will use their mobile phones 
to record like video or something, and then they will create a story out of that. So all they need is a mobile phone. And, um, you know, like in some cases, less is more. And you don't need to worry about um, access to some platforms. Yeah. I've, I've also used WhatsApp. I mean, very simple. Mm. Uh, students, they, they take a picture and they write down the, their story on, on a WhatsApp message. So it's a very simple way to, to use technology, to use WhatsApp. Right. And uh, uh, besides, uh, with all this, that, that it develops their writing skills, students' writing skills, I think it's a, it's a great way to help learners to boost their, their motivation in the language because they, they become, they're doing something different and they become more interested well, thanks, Ernesto. I will uh, piggyback yep. on what Rio said and say that sometimes when it comes to technology, less is more. So I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ernesto, Darío. Thanks, everyone who's watching. Yep. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.